honored to have the incredibly gifted, talented, beautiful, award-winning uh, actress, singer, dancer, uh, Nikki Crawford with me. Hi, Nikki. Hi. Oh, Hassan. Thank you for having me. No, thank you for agreeing. Actually, the last time Nikki and I worked together, we actually worked together in 2000. We did a <laughs> world premiere at San Diego Repertory Theater of Slam. Right. And when I was thinking about something to read, uh, when I thought about this place, yeah. Seven Guitars, the first yeah. person who came to my mind was Nikki. And she was fortunate, are uh, uh, willing enough to say yes. I saw her, she was coming from Chicago on Facebook, had a mask on her face. And she was talking about how somebody was coughing and spitting and hacking. <laughs> so Nikki, Ready to lose my mind. Long, 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 long list of credits. Come on, Nikki, tell us some of the stuff. Cause I know she was on Ma and <laughs> Different Girl, Living Single. Uh, criminal mind, uh, criminal mind, liars, uh, uh, switched at birth. I mean, she got all kind of stuff. So tell us a little bit of some about you. Come on, Nikki, share. Uh, pretty Little Liars. Um, uh, I'm getting ready to um, play Shauna, Dr. Shauna Hopkins on NCIS, the original C um, NCIS. All right. Uh, I have a film coming out this year, How to Deter a Robber. Um, also uh, streaming right now, which. Um, is uh, Ryan Singer's eight plus, H plus. Um, I am one of the stars of that uh, show, and that's it's. She's being modest. I'm. I'm well. No. <laughs> it's just, I'm just trying to think of my credits. Actually, um, done a lot of theater. I actually, uh, you mentioned that I uh, just left Chicago. I was in rehearsals for the world premiere of the most spectacularly lamentable trial of Ms. Martha Washington. Now, nor done. Um, SNL alumni and I uh, were playing sisters, and uh, that was cut short, unfortunately, due to COVID-19, but they are bringing us back uh, next season. So, uh, and that starts in September, so it'll be in the fall or winter. Come see it. It's a phenomenal play. And, um, yeah, and... Now, you've won some awards. What are some of the awards you've won? Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, as a NAACP uh, Best Actress Award, uh, Leslie Uggams and I starred in a show called Stormy Weather. Um, it's the, uh, the story of uh, Lena Horne. I played young Lena. I played okay. her from 16 to 46, and Leslie played the older Lena. And um, I've also done a lot of musicals. I just finished doing Fairview at uh, the Woolly Mammoth, uh, uh, the Pulitzer Prize uh, winning drama, Fairview, right. which was a wonderful, wonderful play. And uh, let me think, uh, what are some of my other credits? Uh, I uh, woman show, opened something? the Las, huh? You have a one woman show as well, right? I do, I did that a hundred years ago though. I did that at Serena Absolutely Center for the Performing awesome. Arts. Huh? A <laughs> hundred years, that's too long. hundred years ago, you know, I was two. And yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I opened the Las Vegas Company of Spam a lot. I played the Lady of the Lake. Um, Got to work with the legendary Mike Nichols, which was incredible. Nice. Yeah. Um, I did the I did play on uh, played Lady Liv and the, in the PBS Great Performances uh, broadcast of that, and have done a ton of plays, musicals. I have a degree from Carnegie Mellon. Um, started off as a dancer, ballerina. Wanted to dance with New York City Ballet, but these <laughs> kept growing. So I decided to you know venture into acting and. Um, Fortunately, I can. I'm one of those actors that can and singers that can really, really. Well, dance. we're glad you did. And yes, again, you. I want to thank you for being here. Again, what we do is we get together. We have scripts, so it's like it's a live reading. And because you know, you get so people who are like Nikki, such skilled at what they do, we do it in the moment for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to read a, a scene from Seven Guitars. It's yes. uh, Vera and Floyd from the great August Wilson, who happens to be my most prolific and favorite writer. I don't think there's anybody who's comparable for me. So yeah. I'm honored to read this scene from Seven Guitars with the incredible yeah. Nikki Crawford. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay. Floyd, stop it now. Don't be doing all that. Come here. I'll never jump back on you in life. I don't want to hear it. I just say I'll never jump back on you. If you give me a chance, I'll prove it to you. You done had more than enough chances. Did you get that letter I sent you? What you doing writing me a letter? I knew that would surprise you. 
I said, Vera gonna be surprised to see my name on the envelope. I sure wish I could have seen your face. Had somebody writing all them lies. Didn't it sound good? Hmm. I like the way it sound. Cost me 50 cent. Some fella down at the workhouse be writing everybody's letter. He wrote it back to me. He read it back to me. I say, Vera ain't never heard me say nothing like this. That'd be the kind of stuff I want to say, but can't think to say. Sounded so good, I started to give him an extra quarter. I say, I'm going to wait, see what Vera say. He ought to have gave you your money back if it depend on what Vera say. I done told you my feet ain't on backwards. My feet ain't on backwards either. I just got to missing you so bad. My life got so empty without you. Oh, Floyd, I don't want to hear it. Just stop it right now. What? Stop what? I'm telling the truth. Go tell it to Pearl Brown. See, you want to bring all that up? I told you about all that in the letter. Pearl Brown don't mean nothing to me. <laughs> she sure meant something to you before. She meant enough to you for you to pack up your clothes and drag her to Chicago with you. She meant something to you when she meant something to you then. Talking about you going to send for me when you go up there. Left out here telling them lies and had her waiting around the corner. She wasn't waiting around the corner. She may as well have been. She might be waiting around there now for all I know. Come on now, Vera, you know better than that. If you go on back to Chicago, then just go. I got to go back. The record company up there waiting on me. They done sent me a letter telling me to come back. I want to go back and take you with me. I ain't going to be here long. I just got to get my guitar out the pawn shop. I might have to pawn my 38. You still got my 38, don't you? No, it's in there where you put it. I ain't touched it. I sat down there doing them 90 J's. I told myself it's a good thing I didn't have that with me when they arrested me, talking about vagrancy. If I had that 38, they would have tried to dig a hole and put me under the jail. As it was, they took me down there and charged me with worthlessness. Canewell had $5 in his pocket. They let him go. They took me down there and gave me 90 days. Canewell said you threatened to burn down the jailhouse. That's why they gave you 90 days. Oh, they got that all mixed up. I asked one of the guards to show me the back door in case there was a fire. He said, jailhouse don't burn. I told him, give me a gallon of gasoline. I proved him wrong. He told the judge I threatened to burn down the jailhouse. Judge ain't even said nothing about it. He give me 90 days for worthlessness. Say Rockefeller worth a million dollars and you ain't worth two cents. 90 days in the workhouse. Look here. Look here. Look what they sent to my sister's house. Say, come on back to Chicago and make some more records. Say, we'll talk about the details when you get here. No, 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 no. All you got to know is it say, come on back. You ain't got to know all my business. Look at that. Mr. Floyd Barton, you get you a hit record and the white folks call you Mr. <laughs> Mr. Floyd Barton. Go on, read it. Read it out loud. Dear Mr. Barton, our record show. Go on, read it. Dear Mr. Barton, our record show you recorded some material for us in August 1947. We are uncertain of your status. If you are the same Floyd Barton who recorded That's All Right, and are still in the business, we would like to provide another opportunity for you to record. Stop by when you are in Chicago and we'll discuss further arrangements. We are Savoy Records. 1115 Federal Avenue in Chicago, Illinois. Sincerely, Wilbur H. Gardner, President. That's nice, Floyd. I can't go without you. I ain't going to no Chicago. You know better to ask me that. What I want to go up there for? Wait till you see it. There ain't nothing like it. They got more people than you ever seen. You can't even imagine that many people. Seem like everybody in the world in Chicago. It's the only place for a black man to be. That's where I seen Muddy Waters. I was walking past this club and I heard this music. People was pushing, crowding in the club. Seemed like the place was busting at the seams. I asked somebody, I said, who's that? They told me, that's Muddy Waters. I took off my hat. 
I didn't know you could make the music sound like that. That told me, say, the sky's the limit. I told myself, I'm going to play like that one day. I stayed there until they put me out. Mr. T.L. Hall asked me what I wanted to do. I told him I wanted to play at the Hurricane Club. He say he fixed it. I wouldn't put too much faith in whatever Mr. T.L. Hall say. I ain't never known him to do nothing for you. Call himself your manager. What do you ever manage? That's because I didn't have a re hit record. It's different now. You get a hit record and you'd be surprised how everything changed. Mr. T.L. Hall then got in touch with Savoy Records and set up a recording date for Chicago. They waiting on me now. Come here. I told you don't start that. I want to make you happy. I got something for you. But it ain't nothing I need. That first time I ever seen you, I never will forget that. You remember that? Yeah, I remember. You was looking so pretty. Oh, Floyd, don't start that. Ain't no need in you going back through that. No, I was just saying, I seen you that first time. You had on that blue dress. I believe it was pink and blue. Mm, it was two different kinds of blue. I had just got out the army. They give me $47, adjustment, allotment, uh, allowance, something like that. I come up Logan Street and I seen you. That's why I always say I had a pocket full of money when I first met you. I seen you and I said, there go a woman. Whatever else you might say, pretty woman, nice woman, a not so nice woman, whatever else you might say, you gotta put that woman part in there. I say, Floyd. There go a woman. My hands got to itch and seemed like I didn't know what to do with them. I put them in my pocket. I felt them $47 at 38 under my coat. And I got up my nerve to say something to you. <laughs> you remember that? Seemed like that was a long time ago. I had just left my mama's house. I knew you was just getting started. But what you don't know, I was just getting started too. I was ready. You was just what I was looking for. Mm, you was looking for anything you can find. I said, that's the kind of woman a man would kill somebody over. Then I seen you turn and walk towards the door. I said, they just gonna have to kill me. That's when I went after you. I said, you was just right for me. And if I could get that, I would never want nothing else. That's why you ought to try me one more time. If you try me one more time, you never carry no regrets. I don't carry no regrets now. I'm going to leave it like that. Come on, Vera. I done been there, Floyd. I ain't going back. I told you what it was. It wasn't nothing to me. Pearl Brown don't mean nothing to me. It wasn't nothing to you, but it was something to me. To have you just up and walk out like that? What you think happened to me? Did you ever stop to ask yourself, I wonder how Vera doing? I wonder how she feel. I lay here every night in an empty bed, in an empty room. Where? Someplace special? Someplace where you had been? The same room you walked out of? The same bed you turned your back on? You give it up and you want it. What kind of sense does that make? I told you I could see where I was wrong. You had what you want and I didn't. That makes you special. You're one of them special people who's supposed to have everything just the way they want it. I said, I see where I was wrong. I told you that. It just seemed like she believed in me more. You're supposed to believe in yourself. A man that believes in himself still need a woman that believes in him. You can't make life happen without a woman. I wanted to be there for you, Floyd. I wanted to know where you bruised at so I could be a woman for you, so I could touch you there. So I could spread myself all over you and know that I was a woman. That I could give a man only the things a woman had to give. And he could be satisfied. How much woman you think it makes me feel to know that you can't satisfy a man? I ain't about being satisfied. So he could say, yes, they are a woman. That's what you say, but you never believed it. You never showed me all those places where you, where you were a man. You went to Pearl Brown and you showed her. I don't know what she did or didn't do, but I looked up 
and you was back here after I had given you up. After I had walked through an empty house for a year and a half looking for you. After I would lay myself on that bed in search of my body for your fingerprints. He touched me here. Lord touched me here. And he touched me here. And he touched me here. And he kissed me here. And here. And he gave me here. And he took here. And he ain't here. And he ain't here. And he ain't here. Quit looking for him, cause he ain't here. He's there. 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 Don't there. You, don't do this. He's there in Chicago with another woman, and all I have is this, this little bit of nothing. A little bit of touch and a little bit of myself left. And ain't even here no more what you're looking for. What you remember? It ain't even here anymore. It's enough for me. It's all I ever wanted, even if I couldn't see that. That's why I come back. That's why I want to take you with me this time. I told you about all of that. I ain't never wanted to hurt you. Whatever you is, that's enough for me, okay? Now, I don't know what else to say. I ain't, I ain't too good at talking all this out. Come and go to Chicago with me. I need you real bad. That's all I know to say. I ain't never needed nobody like I need you. I don't want no hit record if I can't have a hit record without you. That's all I know to say about Pearl Brown, to say about Chicago, to say about Vera Dotson. I don't want it if I can't have it without you. And you don't want it. Sing! <laughs> 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 you were such a nut. Oh my God. <laughs> ah, yes, 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 yes. Smoke it. Thank you. All the sunlight was coming out. I, I was like, know oh. it. I was like, it got, oh, she done got lights and everything on hers. No, it's the sun's coming down. Ah, it was like perfect. All of a sudden, there's sunset on the side <laughs> of your face. I'm like, she got somebody in there with a camera. Uh uh. No. <laughs> I'm going to stop our record. I just want to thank you again. Absolutely. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is Social D Theater. And again, so honored to have the incredible, the amazing, the gifted, the talented Nikki Crawford to agree to do this. No, thank you for having me. me. I appreciate it. I really it. appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you so, so much.